We're here with uh, Dr. Alan Rubenstein. He's the uh, veterinarian for all of our animals. In fact, uh, Doc and his staff are the first people that our animals meet when we adopt them. Thank you, Doctor, today for joining us. Well, you're very welcome. Could you tell us something about Addison's disease? What, uh, what its causes are, what its, what its symptoms? It, it's actually a disease of the adrenal gland. Um, the adrenal gland makes certain hormones that mm -hmm. cause the blood sugar and the uh, uh, sodium and potassium in your body to be uh, in equilibrium and those are very important elements in the body uh, for homeostasis. Uh, without them being in the normal range we go into shock and that's in fact what happened to Shiva one day she, she came in on a Sunday and she was in shock and it was because her adrenal gland had completely shut down and uh, at that point in time she uh, was hypoglycemic and so the portion of her adrenal gland was a, that was affected was the uh, portion that makes glucocorticoids. Now she had an atypical presentation for, for uh, Addison's disease. The uh, typical presentation is uh, a decrease in the glucose uh, and a decrease in the mineralocorticoids, which is the, the uh, sodium and potassium. But her Addison's was caused for, from a very different reason than the majority of cases. The majority of Addison's uh, disease uh, cases involve an autoimmune dysfunction where uh, the immune system attacks the adrenal gland and uh, causes the adrenal gland to stop. Uh, producing those hormones, both the uh, uh, glucose and the uh, mineralocorticoids that uh, cause the sodium and potassium balance. And so we usually see uh, uh, an imbalance of both uh, portions of the adrenal gland. But since hers was caused by a, a, a drug that she was given for behavior problems, uh, which is a very rare phenomenon, but uh, there are certain drugs that will cause the adrenal gland to atrophy and stop working. She was, be given, she was given a progesterone type hormone to control her aggression and uh, she was only on it for uh, a couple of days before she developed this Addisonian crisis in uh, which she came in and she was in shock. So initially, uh, first thing we did was uh, check her blood sugar um, I did not know what the cause was initially. Uh, it was kind of far-fetched for me to think it was the drug that we had given her because, I mean, it's such a rare phenomenon, but I see a lot of dogs come in here with low blood sugars for a, lot, for a number of uh, reasons. Uh, it's not just Addison's that causes uh, low blood sugars. And so uh, we were fortunate enough to find out that was her problem right off. And, we supplemented her with the dextrose, which corrected the glucose imbalance. But she was in such severe shock and such adrenal crisis that uh, uh, she did not immediately become normal. As a matter of fact, she was actually comatose and seizuring for six hours. For six hours, and uh, so it's it's a very severe disease when it occurs. Uh, it does not always present, though, in that severity. The ones that occur, uh, typically, uh, the idiopathic Addison's uh, usually comes on slower, but since she had this reaction to a drug, adverse drug reactions can be uh, very, very uh, invasive type reactions. Uh, we saw her stagger in the kitchen and fall over, and she went into shock almost immediately, and that's when I called you on a Sunday morning. Yeah, and so I was fortunate enough to be around. I came down here immediately, and we found out that it was a low blood sugar. And uh, but at that point in time, I did not realize it was an Addisonian crisis. I just thought it was a blood sugar, and, and like I said, there's a multitude of reasons for for blood sugars to be low. And I recall we were struggling through those reasons too. You were asking me if there were any pesticides around, or if she had access to any of our medications, or anything like that. Because it seems so far-fetched that this very mild um, behavior modification drug, which is not supposed to have that reaction. No, uh, we looked it up and it wasn't even listed in the book as one of the adverse reactions 
for dogs, but we did see it listed as a, a rare adverse reaction for cats. But um, you know, uh, it is one of those drugs that can cause that, and uh, we've certainly researched it since. And it's uh, the behavior modification drugs that are progesterational uh, involve female hormones, progesterone, can be dangerous and uh, we certainly want everyone to realize that uh, their use needs to be uh, come with a warning and personally I will never use this drug again for I'll behavior see. modification because it scared me. I, I, I wouldn't want to go through it again. And there's other drugs that don't have as good a response but that I'm going to have to accept because I won't go through this again. Could that drug do the same drug do the same thing to any dog with or without? Well, it, the dogs that get the idiopathic Addison's disease that comes on without being exposed to a drug is it has a genetic background to it. The uh, the one the Addison's that comes on from a drug reaction, it, I'm not aware of it being genetic, but I, it may have genetic. Uh, problems. It certainly has individual problems because I've used this drug many, many times and never run into this. So uh, whether her individual problem was from a genetic standpoint or she, it was just an adverse reaction for some re physiological reason, uh, it, I can't say. I, I, we certainly can't say it's genetic. Her problem. We can say Addisonian's disease typically is a genetic disease. The dogs that develop it from no adverse reaction, uh, it, it is genetic. And signs of Addison's, uh, sometimes they drink excessively and they urinate excessively. Um, and the signs are usually uh, weakness and lethargy and uh, sometimes anorexia. Uh, and they're just down and out. Now that's the most typical presentation and it happens over a long period of time. When Sheba's, uh, Sheba's came on suddenly, we gave her the drug two days mm -hmm. and suddenly it wiped out her adrenal gland and she didn't have the time span that typically takes in uh, Addisonians. Yeah, the problem with uh, this particular disease is it doesn't get better. Uh, once the adrenal gland is gone, uh, oftentimes it never uh, is replaced with normal tissue and so we're on drugs for the rest of their life. Now we thought initially that it might turn around, um, but it hasn't, and uh, we've been at this now for two months, I guess. And, oh, two months. And certainly, uh, she's doing better, but it's because we found different sources of glucose. And wouldn't you agree that the sooner that it's diagnosed, the more effective the treatment is? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, it's not one of those diseases that veterinarians think of offhand because it's a rare disease to begin with, um, so it has to be in the back of your mind for dogs that just aren't doing well and they can't, you can't find anything definitive on the lab work other than uh, sometimes a, a low blood sugar which could mean a lot of different diseases. Uh, the sodium and potassium balance sometimes is is great enough for you to diagnose it initially but oftentimes the imbalance isn't so great that it's easily diagnosed and so a lot of people will have these dogs for years and they won't know what's wrong with their dog the dog just doesn't do well until they have a veterinarian that's interested to uh, do what we call the ACTH stimulation test and that's what we did to Sheba in order to definitively diagnose it uh, the disease we gave her a little bit of a, a stimulation drug and it caused her to uh, make a certain amount of cortisol. In a normal dog, they have, when you give them this drug, they'll make a certain amount of cortisol and you measure that. Well, with Addison's disease, they lose that ability to manufacture the cortisol. So you get a, a low response or no response. And in her case, we, we got a very, very low response. and that is the response we get for the uh, typical Addisonians and also for, in this case, the, uh, the atypical Addisonians which we got from an adverse drug reaction. So uh, the other way we get Addison's, and it's pretty interesting uh, to know that 
Dogs that get a lot of cortisone shots for allergies, if, if they get it month after month, year after year, that too will cause the adrenal gland to atrophy because you're in fact giving cortisone and so the body does not have the need to make its own. So you can give so much cortisone that it causes the adrenal gland to atrophy and never come back to its normal healthy size and those dogs become uh, Addisonians too um, and, and uh, those dogs also don't lose the mineralocorticoid portion of their adrenal gland, just the uh, glucose and cortisol portion and they are just like Shiva. And, uh, uh, dogs that constantly itch all year round from fleas or from skin infections or from allergies are at risk. Sheba. Sheba. Enough. Enough. Enough Sheba. Are at, are at risk if they get a lot of cortisone shots during oh, their she, lifetime. She does not like UPS guys. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> or if they get oral form of cortisone. Hey, hey, hey. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna keep that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Addisonians can be created by veterinarians two ways. One by giving this behavior drug and the other by giving excessive doses of cortisone uh, for long periods of time. And uh, veterinarians try to tell clients that uh, you know you can get the you get the allergy shots, you know, uh, a few times, but if you start to get them excessively, then you have this side effect of the possibility of causing Addisonian's uh, disease in your dog. So we would rather you went on uh, antihistamines and uh, there's another drug called cyclosporin and uh, start to use less of the corticosteroids uh, for allergic reactions. Um, but nothing uh, works like cortisone for allergies and, and inflammation of the skin, so uh, it gets overused quite a bit. And to be honest with uh, people, I mean, it's a rare reaction for a veterinarian to cause Addisonian's disease with, with cortisone shots. But it's, it certainly can happen, and uh, if your dog is one of those itchy dogs out there, be, be aware that. Uh, you should not give them month after month for years. Uh, it can cause this problem. We, you know, we now have a dog with an ongoing chronic condition uh, that is treatable. And she's on the hydrocortisone. She has been proving day to day from the time of her Addison's attack um, almost immediately afterwards. It should seem like she turned from a dog from a year, year, a year old to one that was about 12 or 14 years old. And at this point, uh, Dave made the comment earlier today that she was more like, acting more like she was about five years old. So we don't know how much she's going to improve and how much she's able to do, but she's, she's a happy dog, even in her condition, and she doesn't seem to sense any loss from it. Yeah, I have uh, another dog that we're treating for Addison's um, disease and she's doing very very well she had been misdiagnosed by a number of veterinarians and uh, because she had the chronic form of it and uh, she just didn't do well for a year and no one could figure out what her problem was and uh, now she's been well for six months and uh, as long as we give her both the mineralocorticoid and the cortisone, the glucocorticoid, then she's she's in good shape, and they're they're very happy with the outcome. It's one of those rare diseases that uh, Mike just happened to luck into here, and uh, hopefully uh, neither one of us will see it again in in a number of years. Uh, but it's out there, and uh, so it's nice that uh, we were given the chance to talk to you know the public and, and tell you that. Uh, uh, if you have a similar situation, a weak dog and uh, depressed and the vet just can't seem to find out what the reason is, it's time to think about Addison's disease because it's, it's lurking out there in certain individuals. Well, thank you for your time and the information, doctor, and uh, thank you very much for saving, uh, saving Sheba's life. Well, it's been a pleasure. We're always glad to save lives.